Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. I hope everyone had a blessed Christmas, and today we're going to be doing a Dollar Tree DIY so that we can get ready for winter. And so to start with, I got four of these 8x10 gold frames, and they're nice and thick, so you want to look for frames that are chunky like this. And then I got four of the five by sevens. These are silver ones, but they're the same shape and size and have the same chunkiness. And then I got a Buffalo check baby blanket from, all of these are from Dollar Tree, except for this Buffalo check ribbon and some wire or a Chanel stem for our bows. And then some Waverly white chalk paint and some Apple Barrel black acrylic paint and then paint brushes, your glue gun, and um, your scraper, some E6000, and scissors, and then black construction paper, or anything just black. You can even use if you have black wrapping paper or anything. And then I wanted to use a snowflake, but I wasn't sure which snowflake would look best, so I just have options here. And I had this Dollar Tree um, ornament but I think it's going to be too big, but we'll see at the end what I end up using. And then we're going to be using our Silhouette Cameo 3. And so I have some white vinyl, some transfer paper. If you don't have this, you can use the letters from Dollar Tree and maybe even just a white uh, paint pen and do the letters that way. So the first thing we're going to do is get our frames ready. And I just took all of the insides out and just set those aside because we're gonna use those and put them back in once we're done painting the frame. So using a sanding block from the Dollar Tree, I'm gonna scuff up the surface just a bit so that the paint will adhere a little bit better. And I always put my chalk paint into little containers from the Dollar Tree so that I don't waste any once I'm done. So I just painted the entire frame and I did all four of these and I did two coats and then some touch-ups with a third but not a full third coat. I would have painted these outside using spray paint but we were having a weird storm this day and so I would recommend that you'd use spray paint but you can always use the paintbrush method. And on the larger 8x10 frames I used black paint for these so the outsides will be black and the insides will be white because you'll see we're going to be putting the smaller ones inside the larger ones and again I did two coats on each of these four frames so now inside each of those frames we're going to have it's going to spell out the word snow so using the cameo I use the font Christmas season and I downloaded that from defont.com and I'll put their link below in the description box. So now I'm gonna take the inside piece of the frame to get the right size and cut out a piece of black cardstock. And then I'm also going to glue in the glass so that it stays put and I don't have to worry about it slipping out. So just take a bead of glue and go all the way around. You kind of have to work fast on this so that the glue doesn't dry on you. But then we want to make sure that we, using Windex or whatever cleaner, get the inside all clean so that there's nothing in front of the black because it will show pretty much everything. So then I just put that mat back in so that the prongs will hold it in place. And then now I'm going to take my letters and I cut out each one of them and then just transferred it onto the glass of each of those frames.
So here's my word all done, and I actually have the S upside down on this, but now we're gonna take the baby blanket and I'm gonna give it a cut so that I have a straight edge, but it's a lot easier to cut these out when you have a grid like this, since Buffalo Check is straight lines. So I just cut out the square to match the size of the large eight by 10 frame, and that we're gonna back that to the inside cardboard and just hot glue that to it and then place it all back into the frame without the glass. Now I'm going to place this in the middle and it comes out to exactly one and a half inches on all four sides. So just using my ruler, I moved it until I got it into the perfect position. And then I used some blue painter's tape to mark my area on two of the corners so that I could place it once I get my E6000 and hot glue onto the back. Now once I got all of my frames ready, I'm going to take my white chalk paint and get it all snowied up and just, I used a kind of a coarse grip bristle brush to make my snow and I just did this all the way around the frame. And then once I got those all done, I'm gonna make my bow out of the buffalo check and I just wanna see what size I need, how big to make it. And so I used the fold over method and did three loops on each side and then just took my Chanel stem and pinched it in the middle and then dovetailed the ends and I'm going to glue that to the top of the frame. And then to make the tails look like they're flowing onto the frame, I put a dot of glue on each side and I like to use a black square on top of the glue so that it doesn't show through. And then just poof that up a little and it's ready to go. So I decided to use the smaller snowflake. This one was obviously almost as big as the bow. And then this one had some glitter on it and I thought that was too Christmassy so I went with the simple small little snowflake that I got from a package and then just used a dot of hot glue and placed that in the top corner there and now I'm going to attach all of the frames together using a piece of the buffalo check ribbon and I decided to make it about four squares between each of the frames so I just used some hot glue and put that down so it would look like there was a piece of ribbon, ribbon going all the way from the top of the bow all the way to the bottom, but it's not really that. So, and I finally got my little fingertip 
savers. <laughs> and so I got to use that for the first time and that was a, a big difference in tapping the glue and, and not burning yourself this way. So I did that between the N and the O and then again between the O and the W and then I put a 10 inch piece at the very bottom and gave it a dovetail so that it looked like a full long line of buffalo check. And here's how it turned out. I think it's super cute and it goes perfectly on this long wall that I have and I can leave it up after the Christmas decorations come down. Now for our second DIY, we're gonna use two of these dream signs from the Dollar Tree. And it's like a plexiglass, but they're nice and chunky as well. And then some faux snow, one whole package, another one of the baby blankets in the gray and white buffalo check. And we never have these, so I got as many as I could when I saw them. Some white vinyl, some gray vinyl, and some transfer paper your glue gun, a needle and thread, scissors, your Cricut scraper, and some cleaning solution of some sort. This is just Lysol all-purpose cleaner and some paper towels. So the first thing we're gonna do is try and get that dream off of the back of the picture. And it's a really cute picture as it is, but I just sprayed on the cleaner and then started scraping the paint off or whatever it is. It's some kind of paint or ink. And so it came off pretty easily and I counted three Christmas songs. That's how long it took to take off one whole word, the dream word. And so I just did that on both of the two frames. And the reason I didn't just use two regular picture frames is because these were really deep and ha are the perfect uh, frames for the project that we're going to do. So on one of them, the glass wasn't staying very well, and so I wanted to get it more secure. So I just added some more glue and then replaced the glass back into the frame so it would be more stable. Now I'm going to cut out the letters, and the top part's going to say, let's stay home. And I used the Skinny from Defont.com, where you can download the free fonts. And so I placed my settings to vinyl matte and then cut, and it automatically does the auto blade for you. And then send that over to my cutter, and it's going to cut those words out. After I got it all weeded out, I didn't like the apostrophe that it was used that was used on let's so I wanted to make it a little skinnier so I just cut it out. So just remember that you can always adjust things if it doesn't look quite right. And so then I'm just going to take my transfer paper and put it over my words and then get it on to the top part of the glass. So when I was cleaning it, I noticed that the top area had a little bit too much glue. And so to kind of cover that up, I went on the back side and took my Waverly White Chalk paint and made some snowy top sides there with a paintbrush and just randomly painted across it so that that glue wouldn't show when I was done. And then I'm gonna place my words at the top and then go through the same process with the gray vinyl. And I'm using a different font on that one. I'll put the fonts in the description box. 
and also if you would like to do this project i'll be selling this all made up and done ready to go on my etsy shop So now I have one of the frames, the back, face up and the other one with the words face down and I'm going to use a whole package of the little white snow and fill it into that bottom frame and then working very quickly I'm going to put my E6000 around the entire frame and then run over it again with the hot glue and then place the lettered side on top of this one and then make sure that it adheres very well. So after I attached the two, I wiped off any of the messies that came out from between and then I measured the width all the way around the frame for the size of buffalo check blanket that I wanted to put around it to cover up the, the seams where we put them together. But I'm not going to put any on the bottom because I want this to stand flat on a countertop or tabletop. So I just hot glued that piece all the way around, kind of working in small areas until it was wrapped on all three sides. And then I just cut off the excess so that it would be flat on the bottom. So now I'm just going to take some of the scrap and I'm using the side that has the finished edge and using my needle and thread, I'm just gonna go in and out all the way through the whole thing. And then as I go along, I'll just go in and out probably about five or six times and then pull it off of the needle. This is a pretty large needle, so that helps too. So then I'm gonna gather it all and just pull it until it, it comes into a circle. And then I'm gonna start sewing in between to tack it together it's gonna so that it becomes a rose and so you'll see how I do that here So once I get to the end, I'm going to sew it together and as you see, I was kind of rolling it on top of, it, of, of itself and then just make the stitches so that they go up the side to attach it all together so that it's one rows. And then I'm going to roll down the sides so that the edges don't show and they're softer and become, you see more of the folded edge on the rows and then just fluff it up and pull it up in the middle and then hot glue that to the bottom corner. And then to the sides, I'm gonna add some of the lamb's ear greenery and put that, put two on one side and one on the other. Um, you can do this however you want, as much or as little or not at all, but I like the softness of these. And so I think it turned out really cute. And here it is on my tea cart and it says let's stay home and snuggle. I actually am putting this in my bedroom, so it doesn't have to be in the living room, but again, more of the winter decor.
our final project, we're going to be using four more of those Buffalo Check Baby Blankets, some really good scissors, a ruler, and some blue painter's tape that I forgot to put in here. So we're going to start out by putting two of the blankets together. And I just made sure that the two edges were perfectly aligned and matched up. They're both the same on, uh, or both sides are the same, so it doesn't really matter as far as the sides that you use, but just to keep it consistent, I used the side with both of the tags on the same side. So I just started cutting four inch slits all along the first side, and I'm telling you it's so much easier when you're using buffalo check because I just did on each of the lines and then one in between and did that all the way across. So now starting on the right hand side I'm going to begin tying little knots and to keep it consistent I took the top one and moved it to the left and then wrapped around the other little flap and made it go in a downward position. So if you kind of just watch it's a lot easier to just see it than to explain it but it doesn't really matter which way you go or which side you use first just as long as you keep it consistent and each of your knots is the same as far as what direction you're going so you always want to have the final pull being going in a downward position or downward direction if that makes sense Now I'm going to do the same thing for the next two blankets and go through the same process of cutting. Now as you can see here the edge is not the straight on this particular blanket so I did have to measure and use my blue painters tape in order to keep my cuts even. So for the corners, you're going to cut a four inch square at each of those four corners and then start tying the knots on both sides. So when I was trying to attach the two sides together to make one large blanket, it wasn't going right because when I would make the knots, it was going with the grain. And so if you're going with the grain as you're making the knots, it tends to want to pull apart and it just wasn't strong enough to do that. The reason why part of it worked was because I was going against the grain and so those knots were working. So unfortunately, I had to put them together by sewing them. And you could do this with a needle and thread just by itself, but I used my sewing machine to attach them together. And it ended up being a smaller blanket than I had planned, but I could have gone and gotten more blankets to make it the larger size, but I just went with it. And using straight pins, I attached them and then sewed them together on both sides. So here it is all complete and even though it's a little smaller than I intended, it's still a great lap 
blanket and is very warm because it's doubled up and so if you're using it just for decorative purposes it doesn't matter that it's small but it's still i think very adorable and you can use it for a, la a blanket ladder i also used it on putting it over a chair and had a pillow in front of it a lot of people have asked where i got this pillow and that those are from ross dress for less so i think it's cute over the chair but then also in front of a fireplace or in a corner, you can stick it into a basket with a pillow and some lamb's ear. And in this case, I used some pine cones and some cotton stems. And I just angled it outside of this woven basket. And I think it's really cute. So you can use it to keep warm and cozy or you can use it just for looks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did I would love if you would share it and comment below let me know what you think you can find us on Instagram and Facebook and I would love if you would subscribe to our channel and by clicking that big red button and thank you so much for watching have a blessed day and remember to always be the light bye